हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला एंड डॉक्टर एम एन गुप्ता एमेरिटस प्रोफेसर एट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोकेमिकल इंजीनियरिंग एंड बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एट आईआईटी दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल कॉम अगेन व्हिच इज ऑन कॉम्प्लीमेंट सिस्टम एंड ऑफ कोर्स फ्रॉम द पेपर इम्यूनोलॉजी so in this today's module we will learn about yet another way of initiation of complement activation we'll also look at mac action in more detail finally we will be discussing some other effects of the complement and its regulation so the objectives of this module are to understand mbl pathway of complement activation which is the third pathway to explain the donut hypothesis for the membrane attack complex action and to understand other biological effects of the complement and finally to understand how complement action is regulated so the concepts which are covered is focus on the mbl pathway and showing that no matter which pathway is involved the consequences in terms of inflammation opsonization as a function mac action and lysis of the cells of the pathogens let us start with looking at the third activation pathway in which activation of the complement is initiated by a menon binding lectin binding to menons on the cell surface of some infectious bacteria and fungi so this is yet another way the complement acti activation is initiated in this pathway initiation is by binding of the host plasma mene menon binding lectin which is called menos binding lectin or menon binding lectin as menons are polymers of the menos monosaccharides this pathway is homologous to classical pathway mbl belong to collectin family so these are pattern recognition proteins and can bind to bacterial and fungal pathogens whose surfaces have menos or similar sugar residues collectins are defined as complement components which include mbl corn glutenin and other soluble pattern recognition receptors these all can activate complement while vertebrate cell surfaces also have these sugar residues these are masked by terminal sialic acid residues mbl deficiency in infants is associated with proneness to respiratory infections innate immune response is important during that period before the child's adaptive immune responses have matured and or passive immunity from maternal antibody via placenta or colostrum is lost mbl is present at low concentration in plasma of most individuals the acute phase reaction of the innate immune response leads to threefold increase in the production of mbl by liver mbl resembles c1q 
in its appearance which is like a bunch of tulips the six heads have a stalk which has a structure similar to collagen it is the heads which are the carbohydrate binding sites lectins are not catalytic in nature these proteins just bind to carbohydrates in free form or as a part of glycoconjugate structures in this case the stock of mbl is associated with two serine proteases called masp1 and masp2 masp stands of course for mbl associated serine proteins masp1 and masp2 are similar to c1r and c1s which reflects the analogous nature of mbl and c1q the pathogens to which mbl is known to bind includes salmonella listeria neisseria species candida albicans and cryptococcus necroformans once mbl is bound to the surface of the pathogens masp gets activated and cleave c4 and c2 this forms c3 convertase from c2b bound to c4b as in the classical pathway this lectin pathway also can get activated by ficolins binding to bacterial carbohydrates ficolins are a group of three lectins which recognize bacterial cell wall and apoptotic cells let, let us look at this whole issue of cell self versus non self which is the underlying theme a important underlying underlying theme in whole of the immunological responses complement action is a part of innate immunity in as much as that the alternate pathway operation is not dependent upon antibody molecule when adaptive immune responses evolved complement action also evolved to create classical pathway the lectin pathway is also similar to classical pathway hence if innate immunity was the only and hence important defense mechanism can it also distinguish between self and non self the key step is the covalent binding of c3b to particles like microbes c3b functions like opsonin and allows attack by membrane attack complex the c3 activation occurs on the surface of the microbes and not in the plasma or cell cell surfaces and that is how the complement activation is able to distinguish between the self and non self cells and cell surfaces covalent binding of c4b occurs to the microbe surface this happens after c4 cleavage exposed a reactive thioester bond on the c4b we have learned that c4 cleavage is initiated by c1 similarly in mbl pathway mbl bounds to the pathogen's surface initiates this 
C4B reaches with adjoining molecules on the microbe surface. If this does not happen, the thioester is hydrolyzed by water and inactivates C4B. So active C4B cannot diffuse away and attack cell cells. Same is the case with C3B formed subsequently. Also cell cells have molecules which prevent C3B deposition. This is a safeguard so that even in this pathway the complement activation does not hurt the self cells of the host. It is important to understand the close relationship between three pathways of complement action. This is shown in the table form as well in this slide. It is obvious that the divergence between the three pathways is primarily at the initiation steps to recapitulate. In classical pathway, C1 binds to the invading microbe directly and this actually is a part of purely innate immunity. An alternate scenario is that the C1 binds to the antibody bound to the antigenic surface. This involves adaptive immunity. In the MBL pathway, MBL binding to microbe activates MASP activity. In the alternative pathway, this function is carried out by factor D. Burton D. Goldberg of the New York University School of Medicine and Howard Green of Massachusetts Institute of Technology. These two scientists showed that when cells are attacked by the complement, they swell and get ruptured, spilling out the contents. A cell membrane damaged by the complement behaves like a semi permeable membrane. Salt and water flow in according to Donan effects. One question which puzzled scientists was that does the destruction of the cell requires multi hit, that is, many holes have to be created with a threshold value alternatively does it require a single hole in which the number of destroyed cells directly depend upon the amount of the complement this kind of a dilemma is very similar to the dilemma in the early era of enzymology where people had tried to understand the mechanism of proteolytic action. There as well, the issue was that if a protease enzyme binds to a protein molecule, does it stay put as a part of the complex and totally hydrolyzes that particular molecule? Or does a protease molecule hops from one protein substrate molecule to another and hydrolyzes bonds randomly in different pro substrate protein molecules? Manfred Mayer and others had carried out experiment which supported one hit theory. Their data is shown here and based upon this data the hypothesis called the Duffnut hypothesis was given. What is shown here is the change in the percentage of the cells which are destroyed as the quantity of the complement, the relative quantity of the complement 
is increased. What we see here are that as the relative quantity of complement changes, the shape of the curve changes and this data supports the one hit theory. It was also found that more than 5 MAC and probably even 1 or 2 are enough to destroy a single cell. Liposomes which are concentric lipid bilayers with enclosed small molecules have been useful in further understanding of the complement section. The formation of the liposomes which have proved very useful as experimental tools is discussed in the biomembrane modules in greater detail. It was using liposomes. It was found that the complement damages the lipid bilayer. An old hypothesis had been the leaky patch hypothesis according to which complement gives rise to leaky patch. A typical leaky patch with no rigid structure of a hole should be able to change in size over time. Electron microscopy however showed that the lesions on the membrane produced by the complement were uniform. In fact, the size of these lesions varies from species to species. So, while guinea pig complement produced 8.5 to 9.5 nanometer internal diameter holes, human complement produced holes which were slightly bigger and were of 10 to 11 nanometer internal diameters. These holes persist for about 30 minutes. It is these observations along with the data shown in the earlier slide which led Mayer to propose the Duffnot hypothesis. The stable hole is an assembly of a rigid donut shaped channel which connects the cellular interior with the extracellular milieu. Subsequent studies have confirmed that complement protein themselves are part of this donut like channel. MAC causes cell lysis of pathogens. There are many other biological effects of the complement component C1Q which are also known. In addition, for example, we will see that how the complement participates in other biological processes. Amano and Ino of the University of Osaka, Japan had showed that in the case of gram-negative bacteria, serum lysozymes and complement act synergistically. You may recollect that we have pointed out many times that phagocytosis is a key process by which immune system defends the body against bacterial infections. Without participation of antibody and or complement, phagocytes cannot adequately cause cell lysis. In 1950s, Nelson showed that binding of C3 on cell surfaces resulted in their phagocytosis. The role of complement is especially important during the early days of bacterial infection when antibody secretion is yet to take off. Wood Jr., Winkelstein and Shin at Johns Hopkins showed that the alternative pathway which is independent of the antibody gets activated during this phase. Elper and Rosen at Harvard Medical School studied the consequences of defective C3 in many patients 
and found pronounced susceptibility to pus producing bacterial infections. This table shows distribution and function of receptors for complement proteins on the surfaces of the cells. It is clear that many cells have receptors for complement components. C3B is a major opsonin, but other complement components also can function as such. The table also shows the receptors on various cell lysis, which are lysed, and the corresponding complement components. Receptors on diverse cells shows that the involvement of complement may not be totally restricted to immune response. Here is another slide showing the various complement receptors, the ligand, which is a part of the complement factor, the structure and molecular weight of these receptors are listed here. The fourth column shows the distribution of these receptors on variety of cells. The last column shows the function of the interaction of the complement factor with the receptor in individual cases. It may be added that binding of C3B on the surface of microbes is not enough to induce phagocytosis. Phagocytes also have receptor for C5A whose binding starts phagocytosis. This slide shows how local inflammatory responses can be induced by small complement fragments, especially C5A. Fragments C3A, C4A and C5A are small fragments which are created during complement activation pathways. These can attach to some cells to produce inflammation. This is normally just local inflammation. However, if these small fragments are produced in large amounts, the result is a generalized circulatory collapse called anaphylactic shock. This can be induced in experimental animals by injecting large amounts of these complement fragments systemically. For these reasons, these fragments are referred to as anaphylotoxins. C3A and C5A can activate submucosal populations of mast cells to release histamine and TNF alpha. C5A and C3A mediate recruitment of antibody, complement, and phagocytes to the site of infection. Increased fluid accumulation in the tissue facilitate the pathogens carrying antigen presenting cells to move to lymph nodes, which initiates vigorous adaptive immune responses. C5A directly acts on neutrophils and monocytes to enhance their adherence to vessel cells and their phagocytic action. Because of the importance of anaphylotoxins physiologically, the structure of the receptors for the anaphylotoxin C3A and C5A have been studied in detail. The C termini of both C3A and C5A contain an arginine residue which is essential for their anaphylatoxin action. Carboxypeptidase which can specifically remove this is present in serum. Hence this enzyme is called anaphylatoxin inhibitor. However, removal of arginine 
does not inhibit their chemotaxis. Action, this slide shows the structure of the receptors, which of course are integral proteins. This table shows complement derived chemotactic factors for individual cells. Different complement components differ in the nature of their targets. C5A, as we can see, not only attracts neutrophils, it stimulates their respiratory burst and aggregates them. So, apart from C9 causing lysis, the C3A and C5A both act as anaphylatoxins. C3A also causes release of mediators from mast cells. C5A has chemotactic and activation action on neutrophil. It also leads to lysosomal secretion of hydrolases, increased vascular permeability, and smooth muscle contraction. Hence, there are many biological consequences of complement activation. Complement system does not participate in immune defense mechanism alone. It also interacts with another important phenomenon related to blood clot formation, which is in fact another cascade phenomenon. Plasmin, which is a protease, can activate both C1 and C3 and is inhibited by C1 inactivator. C1 inhibitor can also inhibit thrombin factor 11 and factor 12, plasmin and calicrine. C3B can cause platelet aggregation. This leads to release of ADP, which in turn results in release of vasoactive factors like histamine and serotonin. Platelet procoagulants are released, which accelerate the clot formation. It has been reported that rabbits congenitally deficient in C6 show poor blood clotting tissues. Two inherent features of the complement system are designed to ensure that complement does not attack cell cells of the host. All complement components occur as inactive molecules. This activation takes place on pathogen surface. Unless the components bind, these are inactivated spontaneously. Nevertheless, complement is activated slowly in the blood spontaneously. Also, as always, there are backup regulatory features to ensure that the complement does not damage cell cells of the host. Such regulatory controls primarily operate either in the beginning or towards the end of the activation pathways. All the three pathways are regulated. Defects in these regulatory controls are known to lead to serious diseases. The basic feature of an important regulatory control is shown in this slide. C1 inactivator is the key regulator of the classical pathway. A glycoprotein of 105 kilodalton, it controls the assembly of classical C3 convertase by blocking C1R and C1S. Its congenital deficiency produces excess C2 kinin. Resultant increase in vascular permeability leads to tissue edema. Possibly larynx swelling leads to suffocation of the patient. This disease is known as hereditary angioedema. Five other glycoproteins which regulate C3B and C4B are factor H, C4 plasma protein, and membrane protein CR1, decay accelerating factor, and GP4570. All are members of the same multigene family. Decay accelerating factor and GP4570 have similar activity with GP4570 showing a preference for alternative pathway convertase, whereas the DF can bind to both classical or alternate convertases. Neutrophils can destroy MAC by endocytosis or exocytosis. The membrane vesicles containing MAC are either shed or ingested and destroyed. This represents yet another illustration of diverse mechanism by which host cell cells.
can escape complement. Let us now summarize what we have learnt in today's lecture. We learnt that menon binding lectin can also initiate complement activation. Most of the biological processes operate via essentially what we call the whole process of molecular recognition. Lectins are fairly broadly specific molecules and hence are very important in numerous biological phenomena which are dependent upon molecular recognition. So, we learnt here that how Menon binding lectin MBL can also initiate complement activation. We learnt that all the pathways, the three pathways which you talked about, the classical, alternative and the MBL pathway, they essentially differ in early steps, initiation steps, where the complement action is initiated, the complement activation is initiated. Operation of the Donan effect during MAC action is explained reasonably well by the donut hypothesis. The other biological effects of complement includes opsonization and producing inflammatory responses. Complement action is highly regulated to prevent attack on cell cells. Many proteins are part of these regulatory mechanisms. It seems that initially complement developed as a part of the innate immunity and then evolved to work in synergy with adaptive immunity. Even now, in the early days of infection before adequate antibody secretion starts, complement mounts the defense against the microbe. This is one clear example where an early system, early in the context of evolution, an early system did not fade away but evolved to retain its utility.